The NBA Summer League may not be the highest level of basketball being played, but it does represent a glimpse into the future of the league. It's where all of the top prospects year in and year out get their first taste of NBA action. It's where we see guys wear their team's jerseys for the first time, and for fans, it can be pretty exciting seeing your team's next generation of talent come together. While some of these highly touted prospects take Summer League by storm and impress, that's not the case with all of them. And that brings us to today's video. Today, we'll be going through the three biggest winners and the three biggest losers from this year's Summer League action. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. We'll start things off in the winners column, and the first player to land on this list today is Chet Holmgren of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Holmgren is technically going to be a rookie this season, but he was actually the number two overall pick from last year's draft. He suffered a foot injury last offseason that resulted in him missing the entire first year in the league, so the Summer League this year was actually the first time since then that we've been able to see him play live in action. And of course, when someone comes back from an injury like that, there's always a chance that it could have taken him some time to get back into the swing of things. That, however, was not the case, as he played as if the injury never happened, looking confident, fluid, and downright dominant for stretches. He's been labeled as a potentially great defender in the making, and in Summer League, he's been a force in the middle, blocking three and a half shots per game, his touch around the basket has been impressive, he's moving very well, which is a good sign after a foot injury, and even though his three-point shot didn't really fall in the Summer League, he's shown throughout history that his jumper can be reliable, so we won't overreact too hard to it. He capped off his Summer League experience with a 25-point, five-block performance, and he's ready to help the Thunder take yet another leap this season. Now over to the first player to land on the list of the biggest losers of this year's Summer League, we have Brandon Miller of the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah, this one has already been a subject that has been beaten to death, but Miller being selected second overall this year was a questionable move to some, so Summer League was the perfect opportunity for Miller to come out and silence the doubters. But if anything, his performances have only stoked the flames even harder. The first four games he played in Summer League were filled with struggles across the board as he couldn't get his shot to fall. He, on quite a few occasions, committed more fouls than made shots in the game, and while he did admittedly end on a good note dropping 26 points in his fifth Summer League game, it doesn't cancel out the other four poor performances. In those first four games, he was shooting just 33% from the field and 26% from three. He committed five or more fouls in four of those five games played, and while he did flash some positives to take away from the experience, the debates about him and Scoot Henderson are only going to get louder. Now back to the next winner of the Summer League on this list, we have Jabari Smith of the Houston Rockets. Jabari Smith's first season in the NBA was a pretty underwhelming one, all things considered. For most of the pre-draft process last year, he was the favorite to be selected number one overall, and then on draft day, he ended up sliding down to number three. He was also supposed to be the best shooter of the top three prospects, but he shot just 30% from deep as a rookie, and a lot of the hype surrounding him died down a little bit. That is, until now, where he's back looking incredibly confident shooting the ball, and playing much better overall. What's important for top prospects playing in Summer League for a second time is for them to look like they're too good for the level of competition, and that is exactly how Jabari has looked out there. In just two games before being shut down, he dropped 33 points and 38 points. His three ball has been falling, his pull-up jumper in the mid-range has been money, and he's even been getting to the free throw line a lot, showing improvement as a driver to the basket. With a lot of changes coming in Houston, this is a big year for him, but he looks ready to take a big year two leap. 
Now back over to the next loser from this year's Summer League, we have James Booknight from the Charlotte Hornets. I realize I am probably coming off as a Hornets hater right now based on my selections here, but the Hornets Summer League squad was pretty bad, and Booknight is another guy who desperately needed a great showing but couldn't provide it nearly consistent enough. When you're a third year player who was drafted in the lottery, you're not even supposed to be playing Summer League basketball. So so if you are in that position, you're expected to play like the best player on the court. This is the exact situation that Book Knight was in this year, and to put it simply, he still had way too many stretches looking lost out on the court, which is a pretty worrying sign. Since being drafted, James Book Knight has been one of the least efficient and least productive guards in the whole NBA, so if there was ever a chance for him to turn things around in his career, it should have been now. He played six Summer League games this year, and five of them were pretty poor, before the sixth and final game did admittedly see him drop an impressive 28 points, giving you a sliver of hope that he can turn things around. Overall though, he averaged just 12 points, shooting the ball terribly making 38% of his shots and 23% of his threes, and if he's going to struggle at this level, then the odds are stacked against him ever making a real impact at the NBA level. And now the third and final big winner from the Summer League this year we'll be discussing today is the duo of the Thompson Twins Amen and Asar of the Houston Rockets and Detroit Pistons. Coming into this year's draft, the Thompson Twins were both obviously hyped up as incredibly talented young players, but a lot of skepticism surrounded them because of the league that they were coming from and whether or not their play would be able to translate against better competition. They came with shooting being a big question mark, along with whether their athleticism would stack up against other professional athletes, but needless to say, they both looked incredibly comfortable out there silencing those critics for now. Amen Thompson, unfortunately, only got to play one game in Summer League because he got hurt late in the game, but before he went down in that game, he scored 16 points, had 5 assists, 4 blocks, and 3 steals, doing a little bit of everything on both ends of the floor, making his presence felt in a strong way. His passing has always been lauded as one of his best attributes, and it translated flawlessly in that game. For Asar, he started slow in his first game, but from then on, he was a standout each and every game, with his outrageous athletic gifts and his natural feel for scoring the basketball. He's going to be a great rebounding guard, both brothers bring it defensively, and they both play smart basketball, passing the ball well and attacking opportunities that present themselves to without forcing too much. And finally, the third and final loser from the Summer League we'll be discussing today is Kobe Bufkin of the Atlanta Hawks. Bufkin was drafted one pick after the lottery this year, and him being taken there was somewhat surprising to many. Not necessarily because of who he is as a player, but because his skill set is incredibly redundant on a roster led by two guards in Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. For Bufkin to provide worthwhile value, he would have to be a productive combo guard leading their second unit, and the Summer League was a chance for him to show that he could handle those playmaking responsibilities, but in four games, he has not looked like a player ready to make an immediate impact. He's shooting a miserable 31% from the field and 17% from three in Summer League, he's committing a ton of turnovers, averaging five and a half per game, and he's just trying to do too much out there. Summer League obviously isn't a deciding factor in a player having a successful career or not, but Bufkin isn't off to the greatest of starts. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who stood out the most to you in Summer League, good or bad. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.